best college football in our area is here at Boston College, where the BC Eagles are now thrashing the Connecticut Huskies. So I want to go to next week's sold out home game. Unfortunately, I don't have a season ticket, so I'm going to have to scalp a seat on the internet where the going price is $100. In the years since I took economics, I don't think any idea has proved more personally useful than opportunity cost. It even comes in handy when I decide whether or not to buy an expensive scalped ticket to a Boston College football game. Professor Mary Stevenson of the University of Massachusetts Boston says this about opportunity cost. Well, it's the single most important concept in economics. Uh, it's the choices that we have to make and what we sacrifice when we make a choice. For many of us, we have uh, hard choices to make about how we're going to spend our limited money. But even for people who have lots more money than we do, uh, there's still the question of how you're going to spend your time. Even somebody like Bill Gates has to make choices about how to spend his time because he has the same hours in the day that the rest of us do. In other words, the practical implication of scarcity in economics is that everything we do has a cost, an opportunity cost. Suppose, for example, that we asked Nobel laureate economist Robert Solow to speak to your class. In economic terms, how would he analyze it? I say to myself, what would I do with the time and trouble that it's going to take me to prepare for this class, give the class, answer the questions, come back home, take a shower, and, uh, and settle down for the evening? And uh, uh, that will give me a, a number. Suppose I can value that time and trouble. The thing I would do instead of doing that is something that I would pay $1,000 to, uh, to do. Then what I should say is that any price over and above $1,000 makes this uh, a net gain for me. That doesn't say I should ask for a $1,000 fee. I should ask for the largest fee that I think the sucker will pay. But if that largest fee is not as much as $1,000, then I won't go. As it turns out, this is a rather old idea. As we learned from the man on the $100 bill, Ben Franklin who expressed it somewhat differently in the late 1700s. You, sir, once wrote that time is money. And 250 years later, it's become a cliché. What was it exactly that you wrote? Well, it was somewhat more than that in my little epistle advice to a young tradesman. In the pamphlet Advice to a Young Tradesman, which Ben published himself in 1748, he coined the famous phrase, using as his example a worker who usually makes 10 shillings a day but chooses to work only half a day, then hits the pub and spends six pennies there. Remember that time is money. He that can earn 10 shillings a day by his labor and goes abroad or sits idle one half of that day, though he but spends but six pence during his diversion, ought not to reckon that the only expense. He has really spent, or rather thrown away, five shillings besides. So your point is that time is money in the sense that he's foregone the five shillings he would otherwise have made. He has not the opportunity, right. Ah, and they now call that opportunity cost, you know. No, I've not heard of that. Opportunity cost. The cost of having been idle when he could have been earning money. Ah, I see your point. I see your point. I think it was your point, sir. Now, the concept of opportunity cost includes all the resources that go into any course of action. Cash out of pocket, time, energy, and so forth. Resources both hidden and obvious translated into the coin of the realm in economics, money. Resources that I could have used to do something else. So the opportunity cost of going to the game is the value to me of what I could have done instead. And this is crucial since the basic premise of economics is trade-offs, the idea that you can't have it all. So what opportunities am I missing if I'm at the BC game? You, you could have been at the uh, uh, Nutmeg Ballet. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you could have been at a, at a nightclub. Uh, we all have choices to make, and every choice involves giving up something else. If you choose one of them rather than the other, the opportunity cost of doing that thing is the one that you don't do, the option that you don't take. And what it's worth to you. And what it's worth to you, its value to you. So Nobel laureates galore at my disposal, 
What's the total opportunity cost of that football ticket for next week's game? Well, first the $100 plus the 20 for incidentals, but what's my time worth? I'll spend about four hours on this game, all told, I figure. In that same time, I could have spent four hours swabbing down the family cars, ah! oh. taken a four-hour lesson to overcome my fear of flying, push, arms down, ah! Ah! oh my lord, spent four hours at manual labor, making brooms. Getting hit, getting hit. All right, oh. So in going to the game, I forego all these opportunities, and when you add them up, the game's costing me a bloody fortune. Right, Professor Solo? Or am I making a mistake? You are, sir, making a mistake, because uh, each of those things is an alternative to the proposition you're considering them, but all of them together are not an alternative because they use up more time than you, uh, than you have. The opportunity cost of option A here that you might choose to do is the thing that you have to give up. But you can't give them all up because you couldn't do them all. That's using more time than you've got. So what would I do if I didn't attend the game in person? And what would the opportunity to do so be worth? What, in other words, would be the opportunity cost of going to the game besides the $120 out of pocket? Well, since we're talking about a Saturday, I guess I'd probably read the sports page for an hour, which I'll value at $25, because I figure that's how much someone would have to pay me not to read it. And then I'd spend an extra two hours with Jan, my wife, and that's worth at least 100 bucks to me. And I'd spend the last hour working on this very script, at an hourly rate of, say, $75. So the next best alternative use of those four hours would have included reading the sports page, an extra hour with my wife, and working on this script, grand total, something like $200. Since out-of-pocket costs, the scalp ticket and transportation, would come to $120, the total cost would be $320 which, frankly, is more than going to the game is worth to me. So after an economic analysis, I choose not to go. But what's so useful about the idea of opportunity cost is that anyone can apply it throughout their life. Economist Robert Solo uses the example of this very course. The opportunity cost of the, of the time and trouble you're spending taking this course is precisely the, the best activity that you would substitute for it if you decided you couldn't. Imagine that it got canceled. Imagine that the, the course went up in smoke uh, somehow. You would have uh, so many hours a week on your hands. Uh, uh, there is one best thing that you would decide to do with that time. So in effect, you're sacrificing that in order to take the course, and that's your opportunity cost. People often forget this, though, right? I mean, they, they yeah. They people first of all they think of cost only as purely monetary. Uh, they don't uh, they don't have the notion that there's a scarce resource, often their own time and effort, and to use it in one place is not to use it in another. And when you're not using some when when you're not doing something that you could have done, you're sacrificing that thing. You're giving it up, and that's your cost.